Today, I'll discuss numerous instruments that could help us comprehend what happened in the early cosmos, during the Big Bang, and possibly before the Big Bang. One of these things that these instruments need to detect in order to understand the early universe and the Big Bang is primordial gravitational waves. Primordial gravitational waves are gravitational waves that originated in the early cosmos, as evidenced by the polarization of the cosmic microwave background, which is the electromagnetic radiation left over from when electrons and atomic nuclei first became bound to each other to form neutral atoms around 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Models of cosmic inflation, which is a theory of exponential expansion of space in the early universe that occurred 10 to the negative 33 of a second to 10 to the negative 32 of a second after the Big Bang, predict such gravitational waves. As a result, the detection of primordial gravitational waves could verify the concept of cosmic inflation, and its strength can confirm or rule out certain types of cosmic inflation. The detection of primordial gravitational waves and their interactions with the cosmic microwave background can also confirm or rule out pre-Big Bang theories based on string theory, the no-boundary proposal, and loop quantum gravity, as well as grand unified theories like the Georgie Glashow models and the Pati Salam models that aim to provide a single explanation for the strong, weak, and electromagnetic interactions between subatomic particles. For all of you Roger Penrose enthusiasts out there, the observational evidence for conformal cyclic cosmology would not be gravitational waves, but rather spherical and largely isotropic impulsive bursts of energy in the initial material of the universe, which physicists infer to be some form of dark matter in its earliest stages. In the vanguard of the hunt for gravitational waves from the start of the universe are experiments on the cosmic microwave background. The cosmic microwave background provides the best observational constraints on the first gravitational waves at this time. The following instruments are part of the current generation of cosmic microwave background experiments that are active. In a variety of cosmic microwave background experiments, the Keck Array and BICEP, which stands for Background Imaging of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization, utilize cryogenic transition edge sensors. These instruments are designed to measure the polarization of the cosmic microwave background, specifically the B mode, which is a vanishing divergence magnetic field. Polar Bear, which stands for Polarization of Background Radiation, is a polarization experiment in the Atacama Desert of northern Chile that uses transition edge sensor bolometers to detect cosmic microwave background radiation. The Atacama Cosmology Telescope is a millimeter wave cosmology telescope that uses cryogenically cooled anti-reflection coated silicon for high sensitivity observations of cosmic microwave background radiation, allowing precise measurements of particular cosmological parameters. It is located in Chile's northern Atacama Desert. The Japanese Space Agency's Lightbird project is one of the most recent space-based projects that will use superconducting polarimetric detectors to detect primordial gravitational waves. PICO, also known as the Probe of Inflation and Cosmic Origins, is a proposed imaging polarimeter that will survey the sky for five years in 21 bands of frequency spanning from 21 to 799 gigahertz. PICO could very well be sensitive to the information contained in the cosmic microwave background radiation. These are instruments that can detect primordial gravitational waves without requiring polarizations in the cosmic microwave background. The Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, commonly known as LISA, is a projected space mission that uses an interferometer to detect and study primordial gravitational waves through the interference of superimposed waves. The Big Bang Observer, also known as BBO, is a proposed future space-based mission that will operate between 0.1 and 1 Hz. The BBO proposes a fleet of triangle interferometers that operate on the same principle as the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, also known as LISA. The BBO detectors will be much more sensitive and approximately 100 times smaller than the LISA detector. DESIGO known as the Desi Hertz Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory is a future Japanese space project that will operate in the 0.1 Hertz to 10 Hertz frequency range. DESIGO is investigating primordial gravitational waves that could have been produced during the inflationary epoch that followed the formation of our universe. ASTRON, which stands for the Astrodynamical Space Test of Relativity Using Optical Devices, is an experiment that uses drag-free spacecraft constellations to map the gravitational field of the solar system. 
and measure associated solar system parameters, test relativistic gravity, observe solar G-mode oscillations, and detect primordial gravitational waves. Gravitational wave detection experiments may be able to detect primordial gravitational waves produced in the early universe by monitoring the timing residuals of millisecond pulsars, which have a rotating period of fewer than 10 milliseconds. This signal is composed of random gravitational waves and could be detected by the following gravitational wave detection experiments. The International Pulsar Timing Array is a radio telescope collaboration that includes the European Pulsar Timing Array, the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, the Parkes Pulsar Timing Array in Australia, and the Indian Pulsar Timing Array. FAST, also known as the 500 meter Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope, is a radio telescope in southwest China. FAST 500 meter diameter dish is built inside of a natural depression within the terrain. The Square Kilometer Array is planned as an intergovernmental radio telescope project in Australia and South Africa. But I've saved the most impressive proposal for better understanding the origins of the cosmos for last, the Gravitational Wave Lunar Observatory for Cosmology. The original concept design for a gravitational wave observatory on the moon in the NASA Artemis period was proposed by Indian astrophysicist Karan Jani and Israeli-American physicist A.V. Lowe. They reported that a lunar-based observatory is appropriate for studying primordial gravitational wave frequencies in the region of a desihertz to 5 hertz, an astrophysically rich regime that is difficult for both Earth-based and space-based detectors.